I'm Senator James Langford, Oklahoma Senator, and I am your teacher professor today. This is Lessons with Langford. Uh, it's a time to be able to just start conversations and dialogue around different subjects. Uh, since we're not in school right now, uh, you're doing a lot of school and conversation about English and math and science at home. Let's do a little bit of government and history as well. Every single state has two senators. Every state, doesn't matter if you're in New York, California, or Texas, a great big state, or a state like Kansas or Oklahoma or Arkansas or New Mexico. We all have two senators. Every state's represented the same. But that's not true for the House of Representatives. There are 435 members of the House of Representatives. That is a big group of people, 435. But for those 435 people that are members of the House of Representatives, they're not all equally divided in every state. For instance, Oklahoma has five. Other states may have 30. Other states may have seven or eight. It depends on the population. So the next question is, well, why? How do we know that? Where does that come from? Well, that actually comes from the United States Constitution, as interesting as that may be. When the founders of our government started our system, they said, let's have one body, the House of Representatives, that matches the people, that has an equal number of representatives for an equal number of people. In another body called the Senate, that would be just equal to the states. That doesn't matter. We now have 50 states, so we have 100 senators because there's two for every state. So one body represents individual people. The other body represents states, and they would have the opportunity to be able to talk about this. Well, then the next question becomes, well, how do you know how many representatives for each state? Well, again, they address that in the Constitution in something we now call the census, but what they called in 1789 when the Constitution was finalized was something called the enumeration. The enumeration, what we now call the census, they required in the Constitution every 10 years for everybody in the country to all be counted. Now, that's a complicated process to go through and count every single head in the, United, in the entire United States. But the goal is every 10 years, constitutionally required, that we would all set up and to have this census count. Well, the census as we know it today is very different than what it was in 1789. In 1789, they would literally ride around from villages and they would count everyone. Now it's done mostly online. And when you talk about the census that's done, we're in that 10 year time period, it's 2020. We do the census this year. So even in the middle of COVID-19 and of all the things that are happening, we're still doing a head count. And the important thing is that everyone is counted on the same day at the same time to say our date is April the 1st. Where were you living and how many people were there? So you get the census information and this is a copy of the census. This would come to your house or you can do it online. Just go to 2020census.gov, 2020census.gov and you can fill out that information and to say how many people are there. Now your first question is, why do I do this? Well, the Constitution requires that this is part of our system of government, that we all have to do a head count every 10 years so we'll know exactly how many Americans are there, beginning with the reason of the House of Representatives. Oklahoma used to have more members of the House of Representatives. We now have five. We used to have six, we used to have seven, we used to have eight. We used to have more representation but it's not that we've lost people, it's that other states have grown faster in population than Oklahoma. Some other states have declined in size, and so they've lost more representatives. Other states have grown, so they have more, but it keeps this equal number. The interesting little fact is, in the original Constitution, when they wrote this, they were doing one representative for every 30,000 people. Now remember, in the earliest days, we didn't have that many people in America. There weren't that many people here. And so they were doing one representative for every 30,000 people. Well, if we kept that same formula they kept with the House of Representatives back from 1789, we wouldn't have 435 members of the House of Representatives now. We would have 11,000 members of the House of Representatives. There's no way that that would work. There's no way you could have 11,000 people in one body representing all Americans. And so the system has changed somewhat, but it's still based on the census. You've got to know how many people. And then in Oklahoma, they would then say, you've got this number of people, you've got this number of representatives, and each representative from the House of Representatives represents the same number of people. It's approximately 750,000 people for every single district of those five districts in Oklahoma, though they have the exact same amount. So they represent the people of Oklahoma exactly. 
and then they get a chance to be able to go to Washington, D.C. to be able to share the message back and forth. So you've got the Senate represents the whole state. You've got the House of Representatives that represents the state, but it's really just a part of the state, and it delivers that message to actually make laws in Oklahoma or in the United States. So then you ask the question, well, what else is the census used for? Glad you asked. It's used for a lot now. Originally, it started out just for the House of Representatives, but now it's used for a lot more. So the determination, for instance, during COVID-19, we have clinics and hospitals all over our state. How were those set? Well, probably by census count because dollars are given into certain areas based on population that's there and what are the needs there. So a medical clinic, clinic oftentimes is funded by the federal government or assisted in funding by the federal government by taxpayers to be able to get it started or keep it going because that's where the need is based on that population. That population was determined by the census. You'd also have roads and transportation. You'd have assistance that comes to states for older Americans. How do we know that there are older Americans that live in this part of the country more than another part of the country? Because of the census data. The census asks some basic information about individuals. It's not intrusive, but it's just basic information to be able to make a decision about who lives where, how many children or grandchildren, or how many people their children live with their grandchildren or live with their parents, or how many people are single adults that live individually, because financial aid will come in different percentages in different ways. So it's not only about the House of Representatives now, it's also about federal aid, and it's not just federal aid from the United States government, but it's also state and local aid. That census information is then turned over to every American. Every American can see it to be able to know where do we have more people than in another spot, where is it growing, and where is it not growing as much. And so people can make decisions in local governments based on that census data. But it's also not just government, it's also individual businesses. Sometimes you'll see uh, a new restaurant pop up or a new store pop up, or it may be a store that you've heard of in other states, but it's never been in Oklahoma, but then it shows up in Oklahoma and you wonder, wonder how that happened. Probably it was because of the census information, because the census shows what areas were growing over the last 10 years and what areas were declining. And if an area is growing in population, a business may say, well, I've got a great business in Arkansas and in Texas. I'm thinking about going to Oklahoma, but what I want to go to an area where that's new or that's growing. And so they'll often look at the census data to see what's happening in population and they'll plop their new store right down in that spot where they think there's growth. So people ask me all the time, why is census so important? Well, number one, it's constitutional. In the United States Constitution, it was set in 1789, every 10 years, we're gonna get a head count of every American so that we know how to do the House of Representatives exactly right all the way across the country. But then it's grown a lot into how we do aid to different areas and how we do different programs to also how businesses actually expand and where they start and they can make their own decisions based on that data. Now, when the census data is done this year, and it's really important that everybody turns in their data this year, <clears throat> when the census data is done this year, everybody will be able to look at it and we'll be able to determine what's happening, what's growing, where are things going in my state, in my area, in my neighborhood. So you'll enjoy getting a chance to see that data, but you'll enjoy it even more knowing you were a part of it. If your family has not completed the census, I encourage you to sit down, even right now, go to 2020census.gov, and you can fill out the census data and to be able to get that done. It's important that every Oklahoman gets that information in. It'll help us set up our House of Representatives to get representation right. It'll help our government know where to be able to send aid and it'll help businesses know where to be able to go to be able to establish new businesses and new investment. Be a part of your own government. This is something that you can do to say today, I was not only learning about government, I was a part of my nation's government. I took part in a constitutional activity. Now, how many days can you go to bed saying, today I did a constitutional thing? You did the census. If you've already done it, good for you. Thanks for being a part of our constitutional requirements. But if you haven't yet, do it together right now. I'll continue to be able to walk through some things in the days ahead as we have education in a really different way than what we're used to, but hopefully get a chance to be able to learn some new things. New things about how we're formed as a nation, new ways that we connect as a government, and new things that we can do for the future to continue to be able to help our neighbors. That's what government is all about. Government's not an entity, it's us. We, the people. We are the government of the United States of America and we help set our own course, including our own future. God bless you. Look forward to getting a chance to chat in the future.